What's up YouTube, it's Detroit John back with another episode of John Talks. Before we get into it, if you would consider subscribing, it makes a big impact on my channel. I'm at 228, trying to get to 1000, and again, I would just really appreciate if you would consider hitting that subscribe button. What's up guys, so we did unfortunately win tonight. Um, I just think that Casey is not doing the right thing, guys. There were some good things tonight. I wanna start with Josh Jackson and basically him stepping towards the whole 76ers team and one of their toughest players in Mike Scott. I thought that was just the Detroit that I love about him. And honestly, I got back to just seeing what I originally liked about Josh. He has the grit and the grind that we need, that we honestly need. We need Josh, guys, we need Josh. And I thought he played well tonight. He had 23 minutes and he scored about 12 points. He was effective on both sides of the court. He was a spark on the offensive end. He was a spark on the defensive end. I think his shot selection does need to still get better, but honestly, he's such an effect on the defensive end and he can be such a good slasher and just, you know, spark for the offense, um, you know, that it doesn't even matter, man. His shot selection is it, really is secondary, but the next thing I wanted to say is, guys, Ben Simmons, and I guess this doesn't really pertain to anything, but he's like an Andre Drummond, okay? So I don't really take too much for this game, okay? Because their most versatile scorer tonight was Tobias Harris. When you take uh, Joe Embiid off the court, this team is not really a threat. They're not. You know, they, they can space the floor with some guys, but they don't have any, you know, legitimate three and D guys, three level scores besides Tobias and maybe Shake, but he was off tonight. And... Furkan Korkmaz is good, but it's just not there without MB. So we saw that tonight. And so I don't really take a lot as far as skill. But what I do take is this, guys. Sadiq played nine minutes. Sadiq played nine minutes, guys. What the fucking shit? What the fucking hell? I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a keep going crazy, guys. I'm going to keep going crazy because, number one, he's cold because Dwayne Casey, okay? And I want to say this. He started versus 76ers just the other day and played well. Okay, now I know Blake was, you know, wasn't playing, but do you know what this does to a guy's psyche? Starting to him and then taking him out of the lineup, giving him minutes and then taking them away and then playing this whole game, dude. It messes with the guy's psyche. And guys, he was averaging like 10, 12 points a game. And then all of a sudden he just couldn't get on the court anymore. And then what do you know? Of course, his confidence dipped and now he can't shoot anymore. And I'm not really surprised, guys. So I'm saying this, guys, like, why are we finding time for guys like, honestly, I don't care how hot he is, guys. And he is as hot as Steph Curry. He is as hot as Steph Curry right now, Wayne Ellington. Let me get into this guy, Wayne Ellington, right now. Because he's playing his role, guys. Wayne Ellington is playing his role. And this is what I wanted Wayne Ellington to do. Like nobody else on this team right now, he's playing his role. And I got to give this guy credit, okay? He is shooting the ball. And he is just honestly spacing the floor like I've never seen anybody with the efficiency Um like, you know, like we only see guys on other teams and, you know, that we that we like to talk about. We, we rarely see it here in Detroit. So Svi and him, honestly, that shooter role, they have honestly locked that up. And I think, honestly, he can he might have a, a future on this team as far as like a, you know, a shooter. Um, but I think, honestly, you could still find time for Sadiq. I don't I think, uh, you know, they started together the other day and I was like, OK, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to put Sadiq at the three. You're supposed to put Wayne Ellington at the two and put Saban Lee at the one. Guys, I like Saban Lee. I want to touch on him. I want to say that Saban Lee is a game manager, okay? And honestly, Saban Lee, um, when he's not shooting the ball and he's not turning it over, he is a good player and he could be a starter. He could be a starter and score zero points a game because all he needs to do is assist, facilitate. That's where he, that's where he brings us value. And that's where, honestly, I was like, man, like, this guy is really, you know, good for, for where we got him. So I liked, I liked that. But guys, I really just wanted to say, and I'm going to be here saying it, that I don't like Sadiq playing under 10 minutes. We got to get out of this damn cycle. So I guess in some ways, you know, we have to be happy that we played well and we played a lot of our guys. But guys, the 76ers suck, okay? So this game does not mean anything. And we're going to continue to be the worst team in the NBA and really not develop one of our best players who is Sadiq. That is my problem right now. I don't care about winning. I don't give a damn. I don't care about speed and I don't care about Wayne Ellington to be honest. He can make seven, eight, nine, ten threes. I don't care. The reality is he can make as much threes as he wants. He can put up every shot he wants in the book. It's not gonna make any difference as far as the Detroit Pistons future. 
okay, and our outlooks as far as playoffs and, and, and how we're going to bring a championship back to this damn city. He does not have anything to do with that, guys, and he's not really, he has no future here. He has no future. I hate to break it to you. I hate to break you after such a good game that he had and I gave him praise and all that. He has no future here. He has no future. So at the end of the day, you're still losing. So guys, we lost today. So I just wanted to say, guys, we're kneecapping one of our best guys. To me, potentially our best player behind Jeremy Grant. And I don't really think it's you know an argument for me. He is our best player behind Jeremy Grant, Sadiq Bey. I think when you put him in the spots he, he needs to be on the court, he could be a you know, 15, 16 game, a game, a game. Okay, and ultimately he could be 20. We saw that with his ability to put the ball on the floor in last game. This wasn't this game because, of course, he can't go on the court. But he's able to do the turnaround jump shot. He's able to get to the basket. He's able to shoot the ball when he's confident. So, guys, we just got to instill this guy with confidence. And that's really where we're going wrong. That's where we're going wrong. I'm not going to stop saying it. I will not stop. I'll repeat myself if I need to. If this keeps happening, I guess I'll just have to keep on repeating myself. Who else is going to do it, guys, you know, at this point? Because... You know, I understand he's cold and all that, but you got to figure out a plan. We got to have a plan for this guy, for Sadiq. Okay, I'm not talking about Ellington. I'm not talking about Sfi. I'm not talking about Isaiah. I'm not talking about Sabin. I'm not talking about none of them. I'm talking about Sadiq Bey. Sadiq Bey, we got to have a plan for him. Okay, why are we, we got to talk about everybody else, Blake Griffin, Mason Plumley. Why do we have to act like this is like a joke and we have to play around with it? Well, like, stop. Just... Give the guys minutes, fix it.